What's up, everybody? Let me know if you guys can can hear everything from uh, my voice to the guitar. But um, yeah, I thought since since things got a little bit uh, squirrely this week with the show, um, I thought I would just hop on and we would do like a ask me any dang anything, any thing, any dang anything. Yeah, any of that. So I'm just here to. Uh, Hang out with y'all, and um, yeah, chat about music and gear and whatever else you guys want to chat about. If um, you haven't yet seen, we can talk about TV and and films and stuff too. But if you have yet to see Magic for Humans on Netflix, big fan in the Hopkins household, big fan. Check that out. Super entertaining, super fun. Good for kids, mostly. Mostly. There's some stuff. There's some double entendres and some stuff that uh, we had to fast forward. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, good, clean, fun. Especially if you start with season three, which is what we accidentally did. And then we had to go backwards, season one and then season two. So, so I didn't know... Um, how many of y'all would show up to this thing, but I thought I would do it anyway and we would see how it goes. Uh, I haven't really done anything like this yet on my channel, but, um, but yeah, I wanted to, uh, answer some questions and let's do this in real time. Let's do an Instagram story while we're waiting for folks to come. Hey everybody. I'm on my YouTube channel right now. Come over and hang out. Uh, there's my dumb face somewhere. Yeah, right there. And um, my dumb face is right here too. But like, come over to the YouTube channel. We're going to do an Ask Me Anything. Peace. Cool. There we go. All right. So, I'm playing my uh, custom shop. And through my... Two Rock Studio Signature. Got a mic off the side here, picking up what's in the room. I don't understand what's going on with um. I don't think StreamYard can do two inputs. So in the past, I've tried to mic up the cabinet and have a voice um, voiceover mic, talkback mic, and it hasn't worked. But I think this will be just fine. It is. Uh, it's not that loud in the room. <laughs> not that loud in here it's like bedroom volume uh, so it's not too bad but um i have currently i have the gladio on so the cornerstone gladio is on the board and it is turned on it is engaged as captain picard would say engage um so yeah so that's what's going on so i hope you all doing well and staying safe out there But uh, I think we'll just hang out for a little while and see if anybody shows up. I'm not a celebrity, so <laughs> I don't know how much interest I can hold. But if you have guitar questions, gear questions, anything, feel free to ask away. Hopefully you can hear that guitar decently enough. Mario, it's just you and me, buddy. It's just you and me right now. How you doing, bro? Mario is the hype man of the year for my channel. So I appreciate you, brother. Got the old strat. Got the strat out. And uh I wonder if I should I wonder if I should change this back plate out. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. It's got this minty green thing. Can't really see it in that light. It looks white, but it's kind of minty green. One of those mint green guards. So it's pretty rad. <laughs> All right, Mario. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about recently about what's going on in the world um, in terms of the pandemic and all that jazz and what we've lived through in this past however many months it's been, man. It's almost been two years, right? Two years 
in like March of this of 2022. It'll be two years. But um, I was thinking about because we have our trip coming up to Nashville where we're going to be recording. And, and I was wondering, oh, man, like, is that going to happen? Is it not going to happen? And uh, I hope it does. And I hope everybody, you know, behaves themselves and we can get back to normal life pretty soon. But I was thinking about asking you guys, like, how have you been dealing with it? You know, like, because everybody's different. Everyone, you know, I know a bunch of people that are musicians, but I know people that aren't, you know, relying on music as their income. So it's been okay. Some people it's not been okay because they lost their job, even if it wasn't in the music industry or service industry. Um, so I'm just curious how you guys are doing as well. We're all people. We're all just hanging out. We're just people on this tiny rock. If you go in a spaceship and you leave this earth and you look back, a lot of the perspective from a lot of the um, astronauts that come back, come back tend to say it's weird when they come back because it's, it's like, we're all just one organism living on this rock. That's just floating in blackness, <laughs> so, which I can see that puts things into perspective. Um, but we're kind of all in this together. Right. Um, yeah. So Mario, Mario and I will, were talking uh, recently uh, about the two episodes ago or three episodes ago at this point when I had Max on from zero amplification and we were talking about how I need to have a 412 cabinet and a 100 watt head. And I was thinking about that in terms of what I would get. What would you guys think knowing the way that I play style that I play in? What would make sense for me to get if I got a 100 watt head and a 412 cabinet? That's my question. And the second question would be, will I ever be able to gig it? <laughs> That's the biggest question. Is it going to sit in this room and I get to crank it only when my family is not in the house? Or is it going to be something that I can take and gig? Um, obviously, you know, a two rock head would make sense. But to have something different, you know, I'm wondering if getting like a plexi or something like that might be cool um you know finding something along those lines that's just a different flavor so i don't know i don't know cornerstone gladio <laughs> Yeah, Plexi with 412. That would be dope. I think that sound kind of suits me too. Like I think when I hear when I hear recordings of that amp being played, um, I, I think that I think it would work for me. I do think it would work for me. I, I, I still think I could do like the rock funky blues thing easily. Um, so yes, I would agree. Uh, JTC, what's your strat neck profile? It is, you know what? So well, it's based on a sixty-one, but I don't. I think the let me let me see real quick. I have the little pamphlet right here for this custom shop, but it's based on a sixty-one. Um, it's a very very playable neck. Like it feels freaking great. Um. Fretboard radius. It's a 10 inch radius. Yeah, 10 inch radius, 61. Early 60s is a uh, truss rod. Yeah, that's all it says. 10 inch radius. C. Is it C? Yes. I think so. Yes. So I hope that helps. It's it's a neck that I had not played before. Um, in terms of I've never I've never felt a neck like this, and it is very comfortable. Very comfortable. It's not a it's not a beefy thing. It's not a thin thing, but it's it's definitely it's very comfortable to like get around on, both harmonically and melodically.
So I dig it. It's very cool. Very cool. Um, got a nice sanded neck. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Fret wire feels good. I should probably try. I should probably try a, a silver sky, honestly, because the first time I played one, I didn't like how small the frets were because I had kind of bigger frets on my SIRS. Um, but these are kind of smaller in that 60s, early 60s vibe. Um, so I should probably try a silver sky. No, I do not use a tremolo. Um, I had I had them block it down to the body. I, I don't, I, I feel like I'm an awkward teenager when I try to use the tremolo. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't easily come out of me when I'm playing. Like I don't go to reach for it and I don't really, I probably don't know what the heck I'm doing with it. And I'm kind of like of that mindset of so many people have done so many different things with the tremolo bar, unless I can come up with something new and how to use it. I, I stay, I steer, steer clear of things. Um, I like to come at things in a, from a quirky angle and that just, it just confuses me. It's like having too many knobs on a pedal for me. Like I just get overwhelmed with too many options. It's like option paralysis. Um, so yeah, I do not use the tremolo. I like it. I like hearing when people do it well, but for me, I'm awkward with it. You don't want to, you don't want to hear me with a tremolo arm. And if I do put it on, it would, I'd probably overuse it. <laughs> um, I do have a telly. Uh, I have a Sir telly that I play a lot. Um, I just like the, the body shape of a strat. It feels like comfortable with me. Um, yeah, so I, I play that telly quite a bit. But the, the body shape of a strat, it just fits me like a glove. It's funny, man. I, um, I'm such a skinny dude that sometimes I'll put that sir on. I remember for a while there, I, when we were doing keto, my wife wanted to do keto. So I was a good husband and, and, you know, tagged along on that. And I like had that guitar, that telly was digging into my ribs. I had a bruise at the end of the night. Um, I put on some extra weight since then. Uh, he was trying either lock to the deck. I prefer the tuning stability. Yeah, I agree. And hello, Mr. John. Hello. Um, yeah, no, I, um, I don't, I don't particularly like floating bridges because of like that whole like tuning situation. Dude, I, I had this gorgeous PRS. Uh, what was the model? It was a, was it a, was it a force for eight, 408, 408. So it was that two humbucker situation. You could split it a bunch of different ways. Gorgeous guitar. It was like a RNG tobacco burst kind of thing. Ten top, gorgeous top on it. Played amazingly well. Sounded fantastic. But if I broke a string on a gig, which I don't often do, but um, the one or two times that that did happen, the whole guitar goes out of tune. And then I'm just like, all right, I got to figure out how to get through this. And my ear's good enough that I can hear which string is at a tune that I can kind of tweak it or I can like adjust accordingly and try to play like president to the United States of America, where it's a lot less, a lot less strings I'm using. But, um, but yeah, I know that guitar. I just was like, I like the guitar. It's just like, if I break a string, it's like game off, you know? Um, let's see here. Yeah. The strat neck pickup, dude, you can't, you can't beat it. And this one, <laughs> turn on some let me turn on some uh, gravity So it's a good one. It's a good one. John, I love my strat set to Jeff Beck specs. That's the way it pretty locked, but it's 
there when I need it. Yeah, dude, I hear you. I wish I could get into it. I have a, um, I have, oh yeah, buddy. Hey, Kalki, what's going on, man? Um, I have a good luthier in Baltimore that could probably hook me up and, and make it feel right and stay in tune. Uh, I'm going to give this thing another, I'm going to give this a year playing it. I have my, I think I've played three or four gigs since the pandemic started. I've been very selective about when I'm playing, but I am, I do have a gig next Thursday night. It's outside safe, safely. Um, but I'm going to give, I'm going to give it a year on this instrument and see how I'm digging it. And then I, I might, I might save these pickups, but take them out and put those Mark Foley pickups in here that Scott McKeon uses because those things sound absolutely dope. Absolutely dope. Um, uh, you two rock amp. Okay. At home, not too loud or using a power which anywhere. No dude. I it's man. I'll see if I can get up. You can see it. It's right behind my chair. So there I put it in a, um, it's in a combo cab, but I have it in a head. I can take the chassis out and put it in a head and have a one twelve cab too. But, um, it is like bedroomy right now. So like it's not it's not loud in this room. <laughs> Sloppy hands tonight. Hey, what's up, Chris? What's going on, buddy? You ain't late. It's all good. Oh, Kalki, uh, you have the, the MF Lone Star pickups. How do you like those? Are they really throaty and tuby? Because that's the sound I like. That's what I'm going for. With this Strat, I'm definitely going for that sound. Right before I came on here, I was, uh, oh, Jeremy, what's up, buddy? What is happening? Good, sir. Right before you guys came on here, I always try to work on, it's it's tough to work on that um, vibrato at the beginning of Red House so that. <laughs> that whole thing. That vibrato is so tough. So tough. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, yeah. The Bluebird pickups. Dude, those, those as well. But those Mark Foley pickups are really grabbing me. <laughs> Did you cry at the end of Endgame? I would say that not... Not in the moment that it ended, but when we left the theater, I did have some tears because I realized it was over. That that phase of like my my heroes that I grew up reading comics, that, that story was not going to be told anymore. That's what really hit me. So I guess the death of, um, spoiler alert if you haven't seen that movie, but the death of Tony Stark did hit me pretty hard because uh, whenever that was, what was that, 2008? when Iron Man came out, when uh, Robert Downey Jr. stepped into the armor, um, that was a big moment for me as, and I was 27 at that time, 28. Um, that was like a big moment. Cause it was like all my childhood dreams were coming true that John Favreau was bringing this thing to life. And yeah, dude, I got, I got misty. I got misty. Um, let's see here. Only played once because it's for a new parts caster. I tried them for two days. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah. They sound just like every perfect like SRV tone you could ever want. Um, cried three times, I think. Thor's mom, Iron Man, and Bur <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, dude. Kingstone Bluebird pickup. Yeah, man. It, it, those things are just killing cheeseburger scene got me the most yeah man now you make me cry on air yeah that was crazy the the whole arc of the story now though i'm interested to see what's going to happen i have 
I've been kind of hesitant with some of the newer Marvel stuff that's about to come out, but it looks pretty rad. And the what if Mario and I've been talking about this, but the like Marvel what if stories on Disney, the animation in it is so gorgeous. It's, it's better than any animation of any show that I think I might have ever seen in my life. It's so well done. Um, yeah, the Thor's mom scene really did get me. I didn't cry at the end of that game. I did cry in the last episode of The Mandalorian. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty crazy. I mean, that's our whole youth, man. That is our youth. I love how you're playing. How do you play? Is it mostly major pentatonic? Um, I mix it up, man. Um, I really do. I try to... If, if like, I'm playing a simple, mm -hmm. just pentatonic shape, right? So, if we're just in A... Um, I will add notes to that to make it sound more expensive. So what do I mean by that? So, um, a lot of people neglect the six. Uh, I love the six and Wayne Krantz does this thing all the time. That's just dissonant enough for me that I like to add stuff like that. And the nine so if i can if i'm playing in a minor key i can still be in the pentatonic world but using specific notes to pull out specific emotions that nine is that's the lick that's that you know jazz lick that everybody talks about but that nine mike landau right uh So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I do to make me sound better than I actually am. But most of it is kind of picking out specific um, um, chord tones or I'm um, picking out tensions. So I think a lot about like chord tones and tensions and how I can create a story with the solo that I'm working on. So if I'm improvising, you know, it's all about creating a motif. So if there's a funk vamp, if it's just like... then I will try to like start simple and create a motif like uh... so rhythmic very rhythmic too like I'm a very rhythmic uh, melodic player so sometimes I don't even think about the melody I think about a cool uh, rhythmic pattern that I can create to develop the solo from the beginning and then I have a really great drummer. His name is Justin Kruger. He he comes from a jazz background, but he definitely has he listens to me a lot. So we hook up pretty heavily on that stuff. Um, uh, let's see what else was by saying. Uh, basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm gonna so. I think I'm going to start doing what everybody does and I'm going to start. Uh, my goal is to create a website and do lessons and have like beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then like slide lessons, like pre-recorded stuff that people can do memberships. Um, so that's, that's on the docket. All right. Kalki, your top three guitar solos of all time. Woo. Oh man. That is, that's a good one, bud. Um, Wow. What are my top three favorite guitar solos? That's super. Well, Mike McGreedy's solo in Alive is iconic. Let's let's go there first and foremost. So Mike McGreedy from Pearl Jam, Alive. Oh, also, Stone Temple Pilots, Dean DeLeo. DeLeo his solo that comes out of um, uh, Army Ants. So if you guys know the Stone Temple Pilot song, Army Ants, there's this killing. It's it's also got my favorite drum fill of all time, too. Go listen to that song, Army Ants. And right after the drum solo or the drum fill, which is like, and then like the solo comes in and it's ripping, dude. And then probably I would probably pick for like a third solo. I mean, Sultan's a Swing. That solo at the end of Sultan's a Swing is so iconic. 
and so soulful and so clean. That's tough, dude. That's it's way too tough. That's a good one. <laughs> Can you do the Prince while my guitar gently weeps? So only if you come over and play the rhythm part, then I will go. I will go. Uh, what's a good word? I will go prehistoric all over. Creating a story. Yes, sir. That's what you got to do. Bring that diminished look in there. Yes, sir. Very Marcus King. You know what, man? It's funny. Uh, I don't listen to him. <laughs> I bought that record and I was like, mm, about it. Um, I love the tones on the record, but I think the songs don't hit me as hard as like Tedeschi and Truck songs hit me. I think that's the main thing. Um, uh, what else we got going on here? He's a beast, though. Yes, he is. Mario, he is a beast. Fraudulent Waffle. <laughs> That's a great band name. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that's I think that's the thing with with Mark with the Marcus King band. I, I love his voice and I love his guitar playing, but the songs don't really turn me on the way that you know other some other music does. And I think that probably I don't know. I haven't listened to any of his new stuff. I'll check out his new stuff because that's been a while. But like he's he's got that he's he's like a I called him like baby Haynes like baby Warren Haynes, he's got that vibe, um, about him and I you know Government Mule is another band that I, I really didn't uh, resonate with in the same way like song wise besides like them doing Soul Shine and a couple other tunes like Effigy that's a cool tune, but there's not not a lot of that Government Mule stuff that I really buy into. But like John, you and I love the Black Crows. I mean, that band forever. I will have a I will have a crush on. Um, one of Marx's best songs, in your opinion, "Honey the Circa Chord." As a guitar player, I would agree. As a guitar player, a hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's funny today. I was going. I went into my external hard drive because I have a bunch of my music uh, on that that isn't on my laptop and isn't on my phone. And there's some stuff on there that I was like, I haven't listened to this in a while. Like the President of the United States of America record. Um, and there's a Harry Connick Jr. album called She. If you guys haven't heard Harry Connick's album, She, it's early in his career. It's very funky, like metersy type stuff. Um, and he's got like a like this, the, the title track She is kind of pop. It's cool. It's really cool. It's like New Orleans funk, like John Cleary, meters, that kind of thing. So I put that on my phone. What else did I put on my phone? Let's see. What did I do today? Um, oh, Houses of the Holy. I didn't have that on my phone. I had to put that on there. Medeski Martin Wood, Friday Afternoon in the Universe, Leo Kaki and Mike Gordon, Clone. That's a great record. Uh, Martin Sexton, Wonder Bar. That's a, that's a real good one. Um, and then, yeah, I didn't have the bends on my phone. I don't know what I was thinking, not putting that on there. Stings, 10 summer, uh, summoners tales. That's a, psh, come on now. Oh man. Yeah. So many good, so many good work. Um, Mario. Okay. So Leonard or McCartney speaking of government mule, Warren Haynes is my spirit. <laughs> Dude, I'm a, I'm a McCartney guy. A hundred percent. Like I had a real serious infatuation with wings when I was in my first undergrad program. And for a while there, this is blasphemous. This is so blasphemous. I'm going to say it anyway. So spray the hate, spray the hate if you want. But for a while I was like, man, this the wing stuff is, I like better than the Beatles because it's all Paul. Um, but you know, Paul and John wouldn't be anywhere without each other. So let's be real. But yeah, I'm a Paul guy. And I think the reason I'm a Paul guy is his sense of melody and his sense of tongue in cheek, uh, his sense of humor in music. Um, and I love his voice, but his sense of harmony, like he has a very, very sage like sense of harmony. Uh, that is overlooked and the dude doesn't really, you know, doesn't really know theory that much, but um, 
But yeah, I mean, I just his voice, his instrumentation, his bass lines, that dude's bass playing will until this planet blows up from the sun, whatever happens to our planet, his bass playing will be mimicked for eternity. For eternity. So, in my opinion, he just was so thoughtful the way that he played his lines and to be able to sing like a bird like that and play in that way come on man come on um what's this the carter live by mk i'll check these out man i you know it's i need to i need some inspiration so i, I should go back and listen i've been working on um trying like phrasing lately so i've been trying to slow my playing down and like really relax into it and relax into um phrasing and i love it's no secret that i love ariel posen and, and ariel's phrasing is a cut above the rest so i've been listening to a lot of what he's doing and trying to like find get in his head like when he's in the middle of a jam um so that's been that's been on my my playlist in terms of like working on guitar stuff I think in terms of raw musicianship, Paul might be the goat. Dude, and, you know, he still kind of has it. Um, and his voice is not as strong as it used to be, obviously. But the dude's old as my dad, so he's in his early 80s. So what are you going to do? I mean, physiology happens. Um, sweet, sweet inspiration. <laughs> Mark's did a couple live YouTube videos at Card Adventures, and they're crazy. Oh, yeah, dude, I did see that. Wasn't he playing like a... um? Like an old, like late fifties gold top or something in one of those videos. I think I saw that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I saw that. Chris, what, what's going on with the um, Captain is Gog? Are those all gone? Are all those pedals gone? What a great, great job on that, dude. It's it's so this community is so friggin' cool, man. It's just so great, like. I don't know if Max, I don't think Max is in here, but like, did you guys see that video I did on this fuzz pedal? Holy shit. <laughs> um, this thing is friggin' just killer. And I actually talked to him. I was like, can we, I know this is not cool, but can we get this in a smaller footprint <laughs> so I can put it on my board? I'm going to take this to my gig next, uh, next Thursday and just put it to the side and just scare people. Um, it's really good. Um, what are you saying, John? So Derek Trucks band stretch. Okay. So Derek played on the tune you were mentioning earlier. You know, I love a good funky jam, brother. You know it. Um, all sold last week. Thanks for video checking them out. Dude, psh, please, my friend, anytime, always, always. What's this? Working on the next things as we speak. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. Keep it rolling, man. Keep it hot. If you and OCE pedals were in a band, what would the band name? And can I play bass? <laughs> what would the band? Everybody write what their favorite. What's the like worst but best band name you can think of? Put it in the chat right now and let's all share them. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good keep them coming though oh man <laughs> you guys are the freaking best man Kaki, what's up spoke to max because your interview with him i ended up buying 1970 fender bandmaster reverb he's now giving it to you oh dude killer please 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 in like instagram or something like when you get it send me a clip Play some and let me hear it. That's awesome, dude. It's pretty good, John. Disappointed mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, that's great. Really? Okay. Okay. I love the multi-instrumentalist thing, dude. Uh, it's like one of my favorite things. Um, I my I don't know if I ever told this story to any of you guys, but my brother, I have an older brother who is not a musician, but he's a, you know, a music consumer and loves music. And he's the one that exposed me to like the Grateful Dead and 
uh, Bill Fleck and Medeski Martin Wood and a lot of really good music. Jethro Tull. Um, is that sacrilegious to say? Because I love Jethro Tull, by the way. I mean, there's there's some there's some haters out there for Jethro for Tull, but uh, there's some really good music. Anyway, um, he was always trying to tell me to name my band uh, Your Mom's Boyfriend. So that way, when you had a show, people were like, oh, uh, what are you doing tonight? I'm going to see some music. And they're like, oh, who are you going to see? I'm like, your mother's boyfriend. He just thought that was hilarious. It's still kind of funny. It's still kind of funny. It's like dad humor before we were dads. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, what else What else is going on with you guys, man? I'm. It's it's fun to just hang out and talk to all of you at the same time. I wish we could all be in this chat like Brady Bunch style right now. Um, I can't do that though with this, but that would be fun. But um, next week when I do my gig, we were coming up with uh, some new covers to do, and the one bass player that I play with is he can't make it, but originally he wanted to do uh, um, Last Train Home, like the new Mayor tune. So we started working on that, but then he's not gonna. He's not going to be there. It's like, all right, let's hold off for him because he really wants to play that. But we got some we got some fun stuff planned for next week. Maybe I'll try to live stream it. We'll see. Love Jethro Tull, even though they beat Metallica for Best Heavy Metal Album in the Grammys. I remember when that happened, and I thought that was hysterical. And Mario cannot get over it. <laughs> Actually, I just dumped – I did dump some Jethro Tull onto my phone today. Um, I think some of my, my favorite – songs are like the like touchy feely here i'm looking it up right now like the touchy feely acoustic stuff where it's just ian anderson and acoustic like uh oh, what is the name of that song what is the name of that dang song uh help me out oh wind up is good um i don't know there, there's there's a bunch of tunes I also put Zappa's uh, Mothers of Invention. I put that record on my phone today. I haven't heard that in a while. But Florentine Pogan was like my jam for a long time, like 2006 through 2007. I don't know if I remember how to play that. Um... <laughs> riding a bike that's a pretty killer tune as you guys haven't heard that uh, mothers of invention record uh it's like a, a zappa album that sounds like a jam band of like today would do things in a way like almost like umphreys mcgee maybe um but yeah it's a good it's a good one yeah that's the gravity mario um i have the gravity ts10 side on right now and that was the out of phase sound. Here's another gnarly sound for you. That's the Argo, the Argo and the Oracle. It's our boy Zach. Lost and Nelly's Moss is another one I've been chewing on. Definitely more fit for a postmodern shoegaze statement band. Nice. I'll check that out as well. The other thing that, uh, other record that I, I was, so it's, everything's going to get rescheduled. I was supposed to have two shows this week two at home with marks one was going to be recorded and it will be on later but that person got sick um and that person is emily wolf and her new album outlier dude so freaking good 
go check her out, man. She is a monster songwriter. Her vo It's crazy. There's this juxtaposition in her music where she, her voice is so soft and delicate and, but still strong and like, um, her lyrics are great, but like her music's so edgy, but her voice has just got this sweetness to it. So anyway, I basically, we were, we were going to record that. We're going to do it later. Hers won't be live, unfortunately. We're going to pre-record it and then I'll just air it. Um, but Jeff Clapp, who's a drummer who plays with, he's got, he's tons of credits, but he's played a lot with Charlie Hunter and um, Sam Frybush, Sam Frybush. B3 player will be on the show soon. And next week, big one, guys, Dave Grissom. Yes, I said Dave Grissom. Dave Grissom is going to be on At Home with Mark next week. And I'm a little bit freaking out about that. It's pretty exciting. So David Grissom and uh, yeah, man. And yeah, and uh Side effect from watching that with Mark is the new music I've been listening to. Deep dive into the dude. Awesome. Awesome, buddy. New music from Joey on Friday. I know. Dude, that record. So I've known Joey for quite a while. So probably since like 2014 or 15. 2015, I think. Um, maybe 14. Because I've been in this house almost eight years. And it was like the second year we were here. Yeah, so probably 2014. And um he he's been doing that record like he said for four years so four years ago when we were hanging talking doing guitar stuff online he told me about it because he, he was trying to get me into little feet and I, I didn't really know much about little feet uh but he, when he played me some of it i was like holy crap and then i just like totally went down the rabbit hole listening to little feet so now that i'm more familiar with the catalog i cannot wait to hear what he did because he does a killer version of two trains that song is so funky. That's, I mean, that's probably my favorite Little Feet song. Um, that and Fat Man in a Bathtub. Um, so, anyway, yeah. So, so big stuff happening. So, we got like uh, David Grissom's going to be on the show. Like I said, Sam Frybush, Emily Wolf will be later in October. Um, who else is going to be on the show? God, there's so, there's so many people I already have booked. It's going to be crazy. Um, uh, Eric Shankman from the spin doctors is like, a. we almost have it locked down. That'll be cool. Cause I grew up listening to the spin doctors. Uh, Pete Honore is going to be on the show again sometime this season before Christmas. He will be on and, uh, we're going to do like a, a deep dive on like all the gear that we've acquired since COVID. And uh, stuff that like is sticking with us that we're really digging. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff, lots of fun stuff coming, man. Joey is the guitar version of Superman. Changed my heart. <laughs> yeah, he is, man. He really is. There's something in the water up there, dude. So many great Canadian musicians. That man, the bathtub, rock and roll doctor. Yeah, dude. I mean, the the first just alone, like the first. Little Feet record by itself is so fantastic. I mean, I could have stopped there, you know. Purple Peak, Purple Peak. It's from Texas. Can you get the guys from Texas? Texas is the reason. I'm not familiar with them. You're going to have to hit me more to that and let me know. I'm open. By the way, anytime you guys are on like DM and, and Instagram and you want to hit me up and be like, hey, you know, you should talk to these cats. I am, I'm all open to suggestions all the time, dude. I've been trying so hard for Mario knows this probably. And maybe you do too, John. I can't remember if we talked about this, but like since season one, I've been trying to get Rhett on and I cannot get in touch with that dude. I've talked to him in his live streams and been like, Hey, you should come on the show. And he's always like, yeah, sure. And then I try to reach out to set something up. And we never, I can't get in touch with them. So I'm trying. I am trying. Uh, Triple Face Boogie Live is also me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but always always let me know. Um, I have like a running list. I want to get my old guitar professor from Berkeley on. His name is Julian Casper. 
he's an amazing player and super cool dude. I want to get him on. I want to get, you know, uh, there's another teacher I studied with at Berkeley, but I studied piano with Dave Lamina. Um, he plays in Ronnie Earl's band. He plays B3 and keys and that. So I want to get him on. Um, and I've even thought about, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I've thought about trying to get some of my favorite comedians on this because comedy and music is not very far off as an art. Um, and there are some comedians that I like that are huge music fans that I would like to have them come on and talk about music and how they feel like it relates to comedy and timing and rhythm and, you know, all that stuff. I thought that would be pretty awesome. Maybe you guys would be like, eh, I'm not into that because it's not, doesn't involve guitar, but I think it'd be a, it would be a very interesting chat um, to talk to some comedians about music. <laughs> uh, if you had to make a board of one pedal brand, what would it be? And what pedals of that brand? Brian, great question. Mario, where is that? Where did that go? You nerd. <laughs> um, so, all right, back to this one. Honestly, Brian, if I had to be, because I almost already have this. So it's kind of easy for me to answer. It would have to, it would probably be a King Tone board. Um, I have the Silicon Fuzz, I have the Blues Power and the Duelist, and I have the 68. I don't know that I would need much more. I don't know that I would need much more. Um, the only thing that I would miss, because I'm so in love with it now, is Zach's Oracle. I, I basically leave that thing on all the time now. But yeah, King Tone for sure. There he is. There he is. Hey, buddy. Terry, you're the man. Cool, Chris. Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's something different. And there's there's other you know people that are doing these podcasty things like me. I'm not I'm not the first to think of this, but um, I don't know of anybody. I haven't seen anybody doing that. So if I can get like Nate Bargatze. Um, you know, a couple people, I think, I don't know, it, it would be an insurmountable task to try to do it. I'm sure that would, it would be almost impossible to get people like him. I like Nikki Glazer. She's like super into music. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Tough to live without delay for me. I'm new to the game, Brian. I really am. I, and you know, everybody, almost everybody in here could probably tell you, especially Terry, I'm not, I am not new or I'm not like living a life that has to have delay pre when did I get this pedal three months ago? I think I just finally found one that I like, you know, just lend a Holy roller. Well, that was unexpected. Almost Blondie vibes meets Jack way. <laughs> oh, talk about the new song project. Yet. I didn't actually Terry. That's a good idea. Um, so, yeah, so the, the tune that I am doing is a song called Think of You. And it's a song that I wrote. I wrote the basically the, the song came out of a dream. I often have weird dreams where I'll wake up and I will like it'll inspire me to, to finish and write a song. And this one's about. A, a dream that I had that I was on a beach. I was walking down to the shoreline and I, my wife was standing with her back to me down at, at the water, like, you know, probably 20 yards away. And I was just watching the water come up and, and rush over her feet just back and forth. And it was like the most solemn moments that I, you know, could have been living in that very moment on that beach. And I thought about like, you know, the things that, um, the things that make you feel calm. And, you know, for me, you know, in, in times of trouble, in times of pain, whatever it may be, you know, my wife is usually there for me. Um, so I wrote the song. It's, it's for her, but it's, um, it's mostly about like, you know, when someone's struggling, they think of this person and it, and it, it turns them you know, turns that smile, that frown upside down, as they say. 
Um, but yeah, and you know, it, it's really, it's a gospel tune. It's like a, I wrote it on piano and I'm going to play piano and guitar on it. I might actually, I might get Gabe Dixon to play the piano part because he's playing B3 on it. He's just such a better piano player. I might just have him do it. Why not? But yeah, it's, um, it's a fun tune. There's going to be horns on it. There's going to be B3. And if we have time, what we're going to do is after we do all the basics and all that, uh, we're going to get around, we're going to get Jono Ricks, the drummer from the Wood Brothers. We're going to do one of my older original tunes and we're going to re-record it live with Jono playing with us. And I'm going to film it and it's going to be that Wolf Pecky kind of vibe. Um, so should be cool. Should be cool. I'm super excited. Comedy music are the go-to during any rough time. They've been for me laughing and a good tune. Yeah, dude, for sure. I'm all about it. Getting some love, Terry. No, it is not about Bandit. <laughs> Bandit is um Bandit was on Prozac for a little bit. I think we talked about that, Terry, and I, I weaned him off of it because I don't think it did anything for him. But you know what I think it did? It definitely suppressed his appetite because he since he's been off of it so i weaned him off of it he's been off of it for like three or four days he's eaten both of his meals every day he's got way more energy um i think he's just an anxious dog and it's gonna be the have to have to be the way it is in terms of him barking at other people and other dogs and that's just gonna be his life i don't want to drug him into a stupor where he doesn't eat because we love him so also, what do you guys think of this new me using my lights behind me for this show? I, I know that Lucy Woodward, she dug it. Um, and I, I originally I did it for Pogo because of the um, Pogo pedal design. I wanted to have that like purpley pinky thing in the background. But I think it kind of makes it look fresh, right? It's not bad. Um, yeah. Let me just say this too. All you people watching this, all you people that are in here, you guys, you know, genuinely love you all very much for supporting me and and uh, always being a part of, of everything that we're doing here. So, you know, just know that I do think about you guys often and I really appreciate you. So keep this keep this puppy rolling. I don't want to get too. Uh, I don't want to get all. I don't want to cry like it's the end of Endgame. We all talked about we, how we cried at the end of Endgame, Terry. <laughs> Lights good. Lights good. Okay, cool. Cool. Good investment. Thank you, Jeremy Shepard, for hipping me to that. It's a good light. So anyway, anything else, guys? I'm gonna I'm gonna shut things down and go chill for the evening. But um oh thanks, Terry. I appreciate that, buddy. I was walking out of the uh <laughs> yeah, he he won't know it and <laughs> It's true. I've tried to make him listen to Pearl Jam and watch the Marvel movies. He will. I know he will. Um, but I was just going to say, I was coming out of the grocery store with my daughter the other day. And she said, she thanked me. I bought her some mechanical pencils she wanted for, for school. And she said, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I was like, well, thank you for being sweet. And I appreciate you for being, you know, appreciative. And she said, well, I appreciate you for appreciating me that you appreciate that. And like, it just, we just did it until it was like, we lost count of how many appreciate you there was in the mix. Um, it's funny things you do with the kid. Oh my God. What's this? Oh, what's this? I missed it. I missed it. Uh, where did it, where? Okay. The light is cool. Hit me up. I'll, I'll let you. It's the Neewer. N-E-E-W-A-R, I believe. It's like 115 bucks on Amazon. It's pretty good. Um, I don't. Sorry, dudes. <laughs> it's the Marvel movie, Terry. You gotta watch all those Marvel movies. Wait, Terry hasn't listened to Pearl Jam? We're throwing you under the bus. Terry's the best. Let's not throw him under the bus. I told you, actually, I didn't I tell you I was going to make you like a Spotify playlist? I'm, I'll am i have to do that. Just remind me if I don't do it within this week. I will I will do that. I didn't cry on any game, so. <laughs> it was just us nerds. You held it together. But you didn't for Star Wars, for The Mandalorian. 
And by the way, Kalki, did you watch that behind the scenes for that last episode of The Mandalorian? That was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. This needs to be remedied immediately. You guys are so funny. This is so great. Yeah, we'll have to get you. I got to get you some uh, some of this stuff, man. I think that um, oh, it says Terry. So cool. He yeah, probably make this. Oh yeah, nice buddy. Um, yeah, I'll get you some cool Pearl Jam stuff. I mean, it. You can't sleep on anything. People fall off the rails once you get past the Vitology, and you just can't because. I mean. Some of their best music was at, was post Vitology, in my opinion. Really was like. There's a ton of really cool stuff on No Code, but like, man, uh, Yield, that's my favorite record. Just, you should just listen to all of Yield. I mean, it's. I mean, it's my favorite record. But Binaural is so good. Oh man, there's there's so many. I'll I'll get you some stuff for sure. But um, all right. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm going to go chill with my fam or my wife. My kids should be in sleep, should be in sleep mode like a phone. But, um, dude, dudes, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys rule. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your week and, um, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Love y'all.